Yeah, hi everybody, Dr. Jason W. Morrison, New South Wales, Australia, Theologist. I have a story, let's see if we can find what it says. I'm going to play it for you now. Lieutenant Tim Rudloff of Thurston County Investigations and third serving elders David Bronson and David Norman of the Olympia Jehovah's Witness. Thank you for being here today. Today we are asking for the public's assistance in the investigation arson fires and one shooting targeting Jehovah's Witness Kingdom Halls here in Thurston County. Now they're saying that these are grievance attacks. Now this is the problem that the Jehovah Witness organization is getting itself into with its blood doctrines and shunning and child abuse and taking no accountability for any of it. People have grievances and this is the only way they've got left of expressing them because the law cannot or will not bust through this religious cult and straighten it out. They're trying to, but they just haven't got to the point where anybody's satisfied with it yet. In conjunction with our local and federal partners, we're relentlessly pursuing a large number of leads developed through crime scene investigation, enforcement operations, and tips from the public. Now I just want to repeat, these are grievance attacks. The media is saying now that these are grievances attacks against the Jehovah Witnesses. They've upset so many people. This person's obviously cracked. Related to these arson fires and the shooting in Yelm. It is only a matter of time before one of these incidents escalates into an injury or fatality in our community. Now I'm going to tell you now, I'm going to tell you now, just let me stop that there. These people with the grievances against this organization are going to go beyond this. They're going to start not shooting at the halls, they're going to start shooting at the, peop the perpetrators, the pedophiles and the people that are shunning. We had a woman shot in a car, just by, could have been coincidence, but I believe the woman that was shot in that car the Jehovah Witness woman on her way to church was shot in that car, I believe, again, that that was a grievance, a, fa a grievance assault because the, she may have shunned somebody. We don't know. And this is where it's starting to get cloudy and muddy. But these people, the media now realize, have grievances against this cult, and it's very, very serious. Law enforcement takes these incidents extremely seriously. And we are appealing to those that live in Thurston County and the surrounding area for their assistance. Now maybe the Jehovah, now they've got to look internally as well. Why, right, they've got to look internally as well. Why are these people at the stage where they're just going to burn down Kingdom Halls and stop this organization as best as they can with the limited resources that they have? While law enforcement is reluctant to discuss our tactics, techniques, and procedures, rest assured that we are using all available techniques to exploit information and evidence in furtherance of this investigation. Now, what you might not realize is they would be investigating that congregation and they would be asking them, is there anybody that would have reason to have a grievance against this congregation or these congregations. Now, this is where the Jehovah Witness organization breaks down, isn't it? Because they won't have transparency in matters of um, of this kind in this kind of matter uh, where they're trying to hide things. So the authorities aren't going to, and especially with the pressure they've got on them now to be transparent about who they've upset and who's been molested and who's perpetrated people this is where the authorities are, and and they would be they'd be in that place and they'd be saying who have you upset to cause them to get to this stage but i don't think the jehovah witnesses would be honest and transparent about that they'd just be saying it's Satan. they'd be saying and thinking that it's satan trying to destroy their movement it's not these people, this cult, has upset people. We will identify the individual or individuals responsible for these crimes <clears throat> with the public's help. We believe that these recent incidents that occurred in the Jehovah's Witness community 
were meant to send a message. Yes, they were meant to send a message. Stop shunning people. Stop people dying from blood transfusions. Stop um, from not having blood transfusions, beg my pardon. Um, stop child pedophilia. Come out and be honest. This church is in a, this cult is in a complete mess. There's only one person who knows what that message is. And that is the person or persons responsible for these criminal acts. Now, I need to stop that there because that's not true. There's a whole, there's a whole community of ex-Jehovah Witnesses that know why this is happening. They know what the grievances are. A lot of these law authorities haven't got a clue about what's going on internally in this religious cult. This is the problem. They're ignorant. Law enforcement believes that the perpetrator is likely a male. And we believe that this individual has a grievance, perceived or otherwise, against the Jehovah's Witness. Now, he just said it himself, right? They know, because they're professional investigators, that this person or these people have grievances. They have grievances, and these are retaliation attacks. Now, this isn't new news, but it's starting to come out now on the media. Now, they've got to get to the point where they go, what are the reasons for these grievances? And again, I'll say it again, there's a whole worldwide community that know what the reasons are, but the authorities haven't got a clue, have they? The Australian Royal Commission were onto it, weren't they? Good for them. Let's keep going, shall we? Community. We also believe that it is likely that the perpetrator or perpetrators have communicated their issues, their threats, and their strong feelings with others around them. Now, this is another thing, isn't it? There's people that have been trying to get to the bottom of these issues that are coming out of this cult, and, and the authorities aren't listening. So they're taking it upon themselves. And this is one of the manifestations of that, burning down kingdom halls, shooting at kingdom halls, etc., etc. You know, trying to stop the people with the carts, trying to... You know, through comments and or conversation. Now, Russia's obviously been aware of this and they've gone, we can't have this in our country and they've just barred the cult. Therefore, we are reaching out to the public for their assistance. You or someone you know has information that will help us in this investigation and will help us bring those responsible to justice. We believe that the individual responsible for these incidents while male, has likely demonstrated changes in their behavior in the hours and days since the fires and shooting. We, we believe that the perpetrator may likely have changed their appearance by shaving, shaving facial hair, growing a mustache, changing their haircut, coloring their hair. We believe this individual may also have made changes to their routines in the time since the incidents missing scheduled appointments, not attending classes, unscheduled absences from work. The individual may have incurred injuries while setting the fire on July 3rd. And it's anticipated that the individual or individuals responsible for this incident or these incidents has an extreme interest in the status of our investigation. We all have might. The whole experience the, tells us the whole XJW commun community has an extreme interest in this because what we're watching is a manifestation of a very hurt and grieved person as a result of this cult. And that cannot be neglected in this investigation. The members of the community often have information of value which they are reluctant to bring forward because they question whether or not it is a waste of law enforcement's time. I implore the public, please bring us any information that you have regarding these incidents. Contact your local ATF office, Crime Stoppers, or your local law enforcement agencies. We have the means to ensure that we can rule out innocent parties. 
Now, cannot move forward. Now, in a way, this arsonist could. Okay, it's not. It's not right to burn down buildings, right? We know that. We know that. You can't justify someone burning down or, or destroying anything like that. But if it's a grievance in a certain way, this person has come to the point where they're trying to do something that the authorities won't do and they've had to do it this way. I'll destroy the place. Like in the Old Testament, they destroyed things. If it did, wasn't working and no one could fix it, they destroyed it. Um, that doesn't make it right. But I think the, go the governments have to look at this and go, right, there's something happening inside this organisation that really needs to be seriously looked at and dealt with. The Australian government no, has tried to do that in the Royal Commission and there's other ones as well. Russia's kicked them out. The other European countries have just about had enough of them. But this is, let's just continue. This is more serious than these people realise. Investigations without the public's help. Every lead will be thoroughly investigated. I cannot emphasise enough, regardless how insignificant you may think the information is, please, I implore you, Bring it to law enforcement's attention. As always, you have the ability to remain anonymous. On this note, law enforcement has identified a person of interest whom we'd like to speak with. On the afternoon of Tuesday, May 29th, at approximately 4.45 p.m., the man shown here purchased the same brand of fire logs from a Tumwater... Tumwater now there's the Jehovah Witnesses elders there. That's them there. And this is the fella that we've seen. Oh, we haven't seen this footage, but we've seen him lighting the fire. There's the poor old elders. You've got to be joking me, haven't you? They need to be honest and transparent and come out with some truths about why this has happened. I admire that were used in the Kingdom Hall fire on July 3rd. In addition to a dark coat and jeans, the individual is wearing a distinctive Seattle, uh, Seattle Seahawks baseball cap, also displayed on the picture board to my, my right. This man is not a suspect. He is a person of interest. There may be a legitimate reason, reason for the purchase of the fire logs, but it is imperative that law enforcement... Now, to me, what about these two? In one way or another, they've got to be persons of interest because they'd have information and knowledge. You think about it. These people here, they're destroying documents. They've been told by the organisation to destroy documents relative to the handing over of pedophiles in their organisation. How many people of these people are allowed to be shunned and in, have encouraged to be shunned? These people should be persons of interest equally as this one. They're equally criminals, as far as I'm concerned. I have an opportunity to speak with this man. Look. If you know who this man is, please look at this guy. Enforcement. We are also interested in finding the owner or operator. Now, here's an interesting point. These people don't go with governments, right? I'm going to bring this out. These people do not agree with governments. But they haven't hesitated in using up the government's um, utilities with this case, have they? Look, look at that. Look at that picture. Oh, we can't do it on our own. Let's get the police in. Yet if, this, if, if America goes to war, these people are going to run. They're not going to go to arms for your country or our country. They're cowards. And they're, again... Their religious ideals suit what suits them. Look at, look at, look, here's the government right here. Look, they're using the government's resources to fix a problem they've caused and can't stop. And that's what's going to happen. That's what's going to happen. This is going to continue to happen. These people should be subscripted. Use, use taxpayers' money here, don't they? Look. Terrible. If you know who this man is, please contact law enforcement. 
They probably know who he is. These two here. We are also interested in finding the owner or operator of a dark <coughs> renegade, approximately years 2017. This vehicle was captured on security footage on the evening of the July 3rd fire at approximately 12.50 a.m. As with the other person of interest, the individual operator or owner is not a suspect. However, it is imperative that law enforcement identify who they are and speak with them. We are also releasing surveillance video to the public of the suspect starting the fire at the Olympia Kingdom Hall on July 3rd, resulting in its destruction. As you can clearly see in the footage of the video, this incident is no accident. In addition to using the fire logs, the individual used a flammable liquid created a fire trail to start the fire. As I stated earlier, it is only a matter of time for this individual or individuals escalate their actions and injuries or fatalities occur in our community. Now these incidences are escalating as we speak because people are grieved and they've had enough. They've had enough of this cult. Um, in the comments, could somebody tell me, is that the Olympia Hall that they're at? I'm pretty sure it is, isn't it? To combat this, ATF is offering a $25,000 reward leading to the arrest and prosecution. Now, isn't that interesting? These horrible Jehovah Witnesses, they're going to allow the government to put up $25,000 to bring this person in. They don't even follow the governments. See how wicked that organization is? Or individuals responsible for this fire and the other fires at Jehovah's Witness Kingdom Halls as well as the shooting of the Jehovah's Witness Kingdom Hall in Yelm. The Arsim Alarm Foundation is also offering a reward as part of their $10,000 annual reward package. And an additional $1,000 is being offered by Crime Stoppers of the South Sound. Isn't that sad, you know? You've got the government coming in to help this organization, and yet this Jehovah Witness cult would turn their back on the government. It's terrible. Anyone with information can contact ATF via our 1-888-ATF-TIPS and you are allowed to remain anonymous. You may also contact Crime Stoppers of the South Sound at 1-800-222-TIPS or you may contact the Arson Alarm Foundation at 1-800-55-ARSON. As always, callers may remain anonymous. Talk about a contradictive occult. They can't stand governments. They turn their back on governments, and now they're relying on the government to protect them and help them fix this problem that they have caused themselves. Isn't that makes me really angry? It's imperative that law enforcement garner the public's support. This individual or these individuals live in our community. Exactly Their right. Contributions will be key to keeping it safe going forward. I hope if they catch this bloke and he comes out with the reason why he's done it, say being shunned or maybe child sexual abuse or he knows the pedophiles that's, uh, that is there or somebody died from a blood transfusion, that they put that on the media as well. Now I'd like to introduce Thurston County Sheriff John Snaza. This will be interesting. On July 15th, 2018 at approximately 2.48 hours in the morning, deputies were dispatched to a shooting complaint in 14,800 block of Vail. Now, I just want to say, right, you think of it. Look at all this author legal authorities. Look at this. Now, they're willing to help 100% with this problem, but they will not help. This organization will not help to convict the pedophiles behind these walls. Absolutely disgraceful. And, might I say, they're allowing the government to put up rewards for these people to be caught. Now, this is a multi-million dollar, multi-billion dollar business corporation. 
and the poor old government said, look, we've got this much to spare, we'll throw that in. They haven't even offered a cent. Gee, that infuriates me. I heard only gunshots. Deputy arrived approximately 11 minutes later and was unable to locate any incident in regards to a shooting complaint. Now, you think about it. This has gotten to the point where people are firing bullets at these buildings. And I, won't, I don't think it'll be too long before they're firing bullets at the... Well, they are. That lady that got attacked in the car that I put the report up on. I don't think that was a carjacking. I think the authorities have completely misread that. I think, honestly believe it was a grievance attack. They had a grievance and they've shot that woman. Later on that morning, at approximately 9 o'clock, deputies were dispatched to 15012 Vale Road Southeast, which is located in Yelm, Washington, at the Jehovah Witness Kingdom Hall. There, it was discovered that there are approximately 35 bullet holes in the church. Deputies called out detectives, and detectives recovered 35 2223 shell casings from the incident, as well as... That's not a small matter. 35 shots. That's a passion crime. That's a crime of passion, and so is this. As a monster drink, uh, energy drink. Those items, along with a bullet recovered in the church, was turned over to the crime lab for further investigation. We have no other evidence in regards to this matter except we believe that the individual got off the roadway on the west side of Vale Road, approximately 10 feet to 15 feet off the roadway, and either stood or knelt and shot into that building, regardless of discovering whether or not somebody was or was not in that building. Well, they didn't care. They've gotten to the point. And yeah, thankfully no one was in the building, but this person's gotten to the point where they don't care because they've obviously been, obviously been damaged and grieved to the point where they've had no other way to, to, to try and outlet their pain. Building. But we are asking for your help in locating the individual who chose to shoot at this. Now, isn't that interesting? The Australian government, all the governments across the world have asked for the Jehovah Witnesses' help. They sat in my country just down the street from me, an hour down the road in the Australian Royal Commission, and our country asked for their help, and they literally sat there in a roundabout way and said, we're not going to deliver it. And my government looked at those people and shook their heads, and they've said, we don't know how we're going to deal with these people. So they brought in the redress. You watch. This hasn't finished yet in Australia. These people are going to come to justice. What infuriates me is now they're using the justice system to meet their end. Isn't that horrible? Church, regardless of who may or may not have been in there, and we are treating this as a hate crime. So it, I'm asking well, for your help. Well, there you go. It's a hate crime. But they've got to, and I'm sure they are, I don't think they're ignorant, they'd be investigating this church and saying, why would someone have grievances against you? But I think they've got to go beyond that. I think they need to get a professional person within the law system over there now and say, look, this is what's happening within this church. This is how they're harming people within the church psychologically. And this is why these attacks are starting to happen because they're at the point where they can't take it anymore. And it's a result of um, these policies that this church, these cult policies, not Christian policies, but occult po or cult policies that are harming and maiming and even to the point where children are dying in hospitals. Um, that's why these hate crimes are starting to manifest. And it's going to get worse. In locating this individual and also helping us locate the individual that's involved in the burning of the two churches that were described by Sack Pleasance. So thank you very much, and I want to introduce Chief Ronnie Roberts of Olympia Police Department. Well, this will be interesting. Well, good morning. I just want to take a couple minutes and just share a couple brief comments. First of all, uh, houses of worship are integral to our communities. And these right. Now, they are integral to our communities, but this isn't a house of worship in its true context. This is a cult form of worship. It's a cult organization it is not a healthy organization sir 
And this is where they're a little bit blindsided. Now, he looks a bit Jehovah Witness style to me, but I'm not going to say that he is. But let's just see what he says. Ar arsons that occur at these locations do more than just destroy property. They devastate our communities. Th these houses of worship provide critical social... Now, what they don't understand is, is although this is an evil act and it's punishable, um, there's a certain amount of satisfaction going out to a... a, a thousands of people thinking that that the fact that this organization is being um, in some way brought to justice it's not the right way of doing it but don't think that this has too much of a major effect on the general community the only thing this is affecting is the internal community of the cult i know that's a little bit sounds narrow but that's the reality of it services to our neighborhoods and to our communities at large now hang on a sec poor old this poor old fella doesn't realise that the Jehovah Witnesses do nothing for the community. Absolutely nothing. They only look after themselves. Tolerate these types of hate crimes and we must... In, uh, hate crimes? Investigate and prosecute those in responsible uh, aggressively. Finally, I just wanted to take a moment and just say uh, thank you to all the agencies that are involved. This has been a very cooperative effort from state and county and federal law enforcement. And we look forward to hearing from the community on any possible information that they may, they may have well, regarding any of these cases that you've heard about today. Do you know what? If the community comes out and starts telling them what the problem is, the two Jehovah Witnesses standing on over there, you can't see them at the moment, they'll put their tail between their legs so quick. This could, this could actually, right, this matter here could, I'm not saying it will, but it could, bust open some very serious issues that are taking place in this cult. Let's pray that it does. Let's hope that it does. That concludes this press conference. Uh, if you want to talk further with uh, people that are available, you're welcome to do that. Thank you. Well, there you go. There you have it. This has turned, this little event here, now they've got the legal system in. Now, if these people muck this system around, I, I've honestly got a funny feeling, I may be wrong, that this could bring this Jehovah Witness cult movement and the way it's being exposed for its cult um, behaviour to a new level of accountability. I don't think that these people are blindsided enough to think that this grievance is for no reason. Let's just see what happens here. Away they go. Oh yeah, thank you. Look, look, you've got to look at this, look. These people don't agree with the government. Look, now they're thanking them for their help. Absolutely. Interesting story. This is Dr. Jason W. Morrison, theologist, New South Wales, Australia. Bye for now. Mirror this, spread it. This is hot off the press news. Bye for now. Yeah, Dr. Jason Morrison, theologist again. I just want to say thank you for watching the videos and I uh, hope you got plenty of uh, self-rediscovery and freedom out of it. If you watched it on YouTube, please share or like. Um, maybe even comment if you watched it on Facebook. Like, comment, share. Um, but most of all, get out and live. This isn't a rehearsal. You've got a one old life. Don't let your loyalty and your faithfulness blind you to the life that you should be experiencing. Till the next video, thank you for watching and bye for now.